Hi and welcome back. My name is Ned. I am a technical evangelist at Caspio and in the fourth video of this ultimate video guide I'm going to show you how to build a payment form using Caspio. Let's take a look. First and foremost, if you're going to build a form in Caspio and deploy that form onto your website, you must have an SSL certificate provided by your hosting company. In other words, your website needs to be an HTTPS in order for you to render this form on your website. In this example, I'm going to show you how to build a form that allows us to book a meeting room. This form is also going to have some calculations, so you can see a subtotal and also a grand total. And underneath that, we're going to be able to process the payment either using a credit card or with PayPal. So let's go into Caspio now and let's learn how to create this form. Once you're inside your Caspio account, the first thing that you want to do is go under Tools and set up your payment processors. If you don't see this option in the drop down, chances are you don't have the right plan. So check the pricing page to see what plan comes with payment processors. And to set up your payment processor, all you need to do is click on this link and then follow the instructions prompted on the screen. At the moment, Caspio gives you the ability to connect to either Stripe or PayPal. We're going to be adding more in the future, but for now, if you want to connect to a payment gateway, you can do so through PayPal and Stripe. You will need to have a Stripe account or a PayPal business account in order to connect those payment gateways to your Caspio account. Once you have configured one or the other or both, go back to the home page. And then just like before, to set up a new application inside Caspio, all you need to do is click on this link and either import data from Excel or an Access database or begin building your application from scratch. I'm simply going to call this application Payment Form something very simple and once you click on finish you should be able to see that application listed on your home screen from here click on open and once again you should be able to see these objects on the left hand side if you've seen the other videos in the ultimate video guide these are the objects you're going to have to use in order to construct your applications and the very first place where you want to begin it's always going to be the tables object because tables are the foundation or the backbone of any app that you develop inside Caspio. Here you can create all of your tables with all of the fields. You can include your primary keys and foreign keys in order to set up a one-to-many relationship or a many-to-many, -many, just like any traditional database application that you develop. So let's begin by setting up our first table. And then you're going to have to list all of your fields. Now I'm going to add all of these fields very quickly and then I'm going to explain why I chose the data type that I did for each one of my fields. All right, I have quickly added all of the fields to my table. Let me explain the data types that I'm using. Most of the data types for these fields are going to be currencies. Uh, the very first field that I have is a meeting ID, and you can see that I chose random ID. What this means is every time somebody books a meeting room, we're going to create a random ID in the table to identify that meeting by that unique ID. For my meeting room, I'm using currency, so when you select the actual meeting room, it's not going to store the name of the meeting room in the table, it's actually going to store the dollar value inside a table. We also have projectors, screen, and TV, and then we also have a subtotal field, so when you compute all of these together, it's going to give us a subtotal, which is also going to be displayed as a currency. Then we have lunch, which is also currency and total people that are going to be ordering that lunch. And I'm choosing integer because we want to avoid decimals. Then we have coffee and total cases, assorted beverages, which is also currency, total number of people ordering beverages, which is again integer. We have the subtotal for food and bev, and we also have the total cost. So when you're filling out this entire form, we have a feel for total cost because we're trying to compute all of these calculations together. Once you're done adding all of your fields, just go ahead and click on save and then give your table a name. I'm going to call this something very simple, meeting rooms, and click finish. And there's your very first table. You can always click on design to modify your fields once again, or you can click on open to see all of your data inside the table. Obviously, this is a blank table. There's no data inside it because we just created this table. Now let's go to data pages and create the form. To build your form, click on the new data page link. This is going to launch Caspio's point and click data page wizard. Here you can build many different types of interfaces, but for now we're going to select submission form and click next. For your data source, that needs to be your meeting rooms table that you just created, because when you submit the form via the web, all that data is going to be stored inside that table. 
As for your data page name, let's give this a name. We're going to call this book a meeting room. Your account will come with some preloaded styles that you can select. This is for the aesthetics, the look and feel of your form. I have already pre-configured my style for this video, so I'm going to select that and then continue. On this screen, you can choose whatever field you wish to include in your form. I'm going to include all the fields from the table and continue. Once you reach this screen where it reads configure its properties, here you can select all of your fields on the left hand side and you can make modifications on the right side. If you would like to see what your form looks like at any point, you can always click on the preview button and here's what the form looks like. It's a very simple form at this point, but now let's learn how to customize the form and manipulate some of the field elements in order to create drop downs and radio buttons in addition to those calculations that we talked about. So back inside Caspio, let's start with the meeting room field. Instead of that being a text field, I would like to convert that into a dropdown. And then I'm going to add my options as for custom values, what I would like to have inside that dropdown. So the first option can say select meeting room. And for my value, I'm going to change that to a zero. Let's add a few more. Meeting room A. And in parentheses, I'm just going to notify the end user how much meeting room A costs. Let's say $5,000. As for my value, I would like to change that to 5,000 to reflect that figure. So what does this mean? On the front end, when the user clicks on the dropdown, this is what they'll see. But if they select that option and click submit, you're going to be storing that inside a table as 5,000 because it's a numerical value and we're using a currency data type in order to store that numerical value. Let's add two more options. Meeting room B, in parentheses, will say $3,000. And let's have the figure reflect that under value. And let's add one more for meeting room C. We'll turn that into 1,000 and change the value to 1,000. Now, as I said, you can click on the preview button at any point as you're customizing your form. So if I were to click on the preview button now, you're going to be able to see that drop down. And it allows me to select whatever meeting room I want back inside Caspio. For my projector, now we're going to jump into some radio buttons. So under form element, I'll turn that into a radio button. As the first option, I'm going to say none, and I'm going to assign the value of zero, and I want to default to that option. Let's add one more, and let's just say that this projector is going to cost $1,000, and then I'll just change my value to 1000 So let's hit preview just so you see what this looks like. You can see how it defaults to none, but you do have the option here to select 1000. So let's just repeat the process for both of these two options as well. So let's go back inside Caspio and for screen, once again, we're going to select radio button. We'll say none, change that to zero, make that default. And then one more option, we'll say 500 and change the value to 500. And for TV, do the same thing as well. Radio buttons will say none. Change that to zero. Default to that. And then one more option. We'll say the TV cost can be 300 and change the value to 300. So now when I hit preview, all three of those fields are going to be set up the same exact way. And first we can select our meeting room and then we have the option to select if we want to order a projector, or a screen, or a TV. The next thing we're going to learn is how to create a subtotal field to compute these field options. So let's go back into Caspio. Under subtotal, let's change the form element into a calculated value. And you're going to use this formula field to add your equation. Now this is a very simple equation that we're adding in order to compute that subtotal. And the way you do that is simply by using the insert button and adding all four of these fields. So we're going to start with the meeting room. After meeting room, you're going to add a plus sign, and then just insert the rest of your fields. Projector, another plus sign, screen, one more plus sign, and the last field we're going to add for this subtotal category is going to be TV. Now for my subtotal field, I want to format this field and change that into a currency. And then you have the option here to have however many digits you want after the decimal. I'm going to change that to zero. Click OK, and now watch what happens when I hit Preview. Once you start selecting your options here, so let's say Meeting Room A, 
you're going to see how this subtotal computes in real time. If you select the projector, you're going to see 6,000. If you select screen and so on, you're going to be able to see how that figure is modified based on your prior selection. Let's continue customizing the rest of the forms. We have a few more fields here to modify. So back inside Caspio. Under lunch, we're going to select this to be a radio button. The first option, we're going to go and say none. Change the value to zero. Have that be defaulted to. And then let's have the second radio button be $14.99 per person, let's just say. And change the value to $14.99. For total number of people that we're ordering the lunch for, this is going to remain a text field. But in the advanced tab, what I would like to do is default to zero. So even if you leave it as none, it's always going to be zero. But if you change it to $14.99, you need to specify for how many people you're ordering lunch for. Back to standard tab, let's go down to coffee, change that to radio button. First option will read none and zero. And then you're going to say however much you want to charge for your coffee cases. Let's just say $9.99 per case. Change the value to 9.99. Under total cases in the advanced tab, once again, we're going to default to zero. And our last field is assorted beverages. So back to the standard tab. Once again, we're going to change that to radio buttons. We'll say none, zero. And we'll say maybe $5.99 per person and update the value to say 5.99. And total number of assorted beverages in the advanced tab. Again, we're going to receive the value and we want to default to zero. So now when you hit preview, if I select $14.99 for lunch per person, and I update this figure to 50. My calculation is not computing yet because I haven't configured that equation. So let's go back to Caspio and let's learn how to set up that second equation, which is also very easy to do. So under subtotal, you're going to change the standard form element into a calculated value. And in here, you're going to add your equation. Also a very, very simple computation. Using the insert button, you're going to add lunch first and then the multiplication sign. And you want to times that by the total people field. So however many people you're ordering lunch for, you want to get the multiplication between those two fields. Then a plus sign. So let's move on to coffee times number of cases. And another plus sign here. And we're going to now finish this off with the assorted beverages and times that by Total number. So there's my second subtotal, which is for food and beverage. Again, I'm going to format this just like I did before under custom. We're going to change that to currency, and I don't care for the digits after the decimal, so I'm going to change that to zero and hit OK. Preview once again, and there is one thing that I forgot to update, so let's go back to Caspio. Let me show you what I forgot to do. So under coffee, make sure you default to zero for both the coffee and assorted beverages. And when you do that and click preview again, now you're going to be able to see this zero under subtotal. So let's take a look and see if it works. If I say $14.99 per person and I want to order that for 100 people, you're going to see how that total is reflected down here below under subtotal. If I order, let's say, 50 cases of coffee, now what it's doing, it's taking this figure and adding it to this figure. And that's why you get $19.99 here down below. And the last thing that I want to make a change to is I want to get the total between this subtotal and this subtotal to give me a grand total here at the very bottom. And here's how we do that. So for that very last field, once again, you're going to change that to a calculated value. And inside this window here, you're going to insert now a nested value. So you don't have to repeat those formulas again. All you need to do is find a subtotal field and plus that by the subtotal field for food and bev. Change the formatting once again to reflect that. So let's have that be currency. Digits will be zero after the decimal. Click OK. Hit preview one last time. And now you're going to be able to see that grand total at the bottom. So what that means is when I start selecting my options in my form, you'll see how it's reflected down below. If I change this to, let's say, 200 people for lunch or 500 or 5,000 for that matter, you can see the grand total down here below. Now the last thing that we want to learn in this video is how to insert that credit card option field and also PayPal so you can process payments. And to do that, it's actually very easy. 
The first thing we did in this video was learn how to set up our payment gateways or payment processors. Caspio currently has Stripe and PayPal. And once you configure that, using the insert button here, you're going to be able to add your payment field. Okay, I'm going to move that payment field all the way at the bottom. Typically, you'll find that field at the bottom of the form. And this is actually very easy to configure. When you select payment, you're going to see payment options here. For your credit card processor, you can include Stripe if you have that configured. And for your PayPal Express checkout, if you have that configured as well, you can select PayPal. You can have the placement be one option per line, or you can have both options on one line. And you'll see what that looks like in just a second. The field for amount, this is the amount that you want to process. And we have that field called total cost. So we're going to select that in this drop down. As for my currency, I'm going to leave that as US dollars. One last thing that I want to mention about this is that if you go to the advanced tab, you have additional transaction data that you can capture and store inside your table. However, if you want to capture this information, you're going to need to create these fields inside your table first. And once you create those fields inside a table, you can select them from this drop down to map out those fields. So now what that means is when you submit the form, that information will also be stored inside your table for tracking purposes. Let's hit preview. And there you have the credit card option where you input your credit card number, expiration date, and security code, or you can choose to pay via PayPal. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it, and hopefully we'll see you in the final video of this ultimate video guide where I show you how to inject some HTML and CSS into your form to make it a little bit more visually appealing. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.